Welcome to the Belfry Hockey Podcast. My name is Daryl Belfry, and this is Season 3, Episode 2. We're going to focus on single structures. So the last episode, we focused on a kind of an overview of what I think are four broad buckets of where player development is in terms of its execution. Today, I want to focus on the first bucket, which is single structure, which is the most common bucket that most coaches uh, have to live in. And we all start there. It's just a matter of trying to get enough experience and enough level of understanding to be able to move beyond that. And unless you have a great mentor, it's very difficult to do that. There's just not a lot of resources out there that talk about how to move your individual teaching ability along. And I've spent my entire career trying to figure out how I can be a better teacher in hockey. And so now I want to be able to transfer some of what I've learned to you uh, so that you might be able to get a few ideas or new ideas, things that you may not have thought about that may become, make you more of an effective teacher as it relates to imparting skill development as part of your practice. I've run many practices and there's been not a lot of skill development that's been able to be achieved because of the way in which I set things up, my mentality going into it and the things that I focused on. And so one of the things I had to start to break away from initially was that the drill was the most important thing. The drill is not the most important thing. The teacher is the most important and the drill is somewhat irrelevant. There's there's obviously relevance to it. Um, it gives you the drill highlights different aspects of what skill development you could be focusing on it gives you a platform to be able to pull out certain skills uh, pull certain skills to the forefront for the players to focus on but when you're exclusively focused on just making sure that this thing runs the drill runs and it goes the puck goes from a to b to c no one misses a pass and let's just make sure that it gets done perfectly so that aesthetically you know it looks like i know what the hell i'm doing everybody has been there every coach has started out that way you you just want it to look reasonable that it gets around every player is moving at a reasonable rate it's got a little pace the players look like they're having fun there's a few shots on net everybody's happy blow the whistle then you're like oh no now i gotta do another one you know everybody's been there it's really hard to teach inside and run drills it's really hard and if you don't have a lot of experience it's even more difficult so that's why what i want to do is try to see if we can get into that space highlight some things give some ideas as to how we can make this single structure better because the thing is is that because of the experience level of most coaches that are coaching, particularly in minor hockey, and they don't have a lot of disposable time. You have family, you got a job, you got other things that are pulling your time. You don't have time to be like researching, first acquiring a drill bank, and then once you have a drill bank, like understanding how to work those drills to be able to acquire, to get your kids to be able to acquire skills. That's just a lot to ask, And but yet most of our coaches, this is where they live is in this single structure and the challenge is is that when you're in the single structure and the drill becomes the focus and we're not really teaching the drill that leaves the top kids they are are left to their own devices and they just start figuring out ways to humor themselves and they and they can uh, come up with their own personal development plan and they just take your drill and figure out different things uh, to do inside of it Uh, but the number of kids that are in your on your ice that are actually going to be able to derive a really strong benefit from really starts to fall off so what i want to do is try to give more structure to you to see if we can see if we can impact more kids on the ice and my objective always was at some point i want to find a way to impact every player regardless and and it's so difficult because doesn't matter if you're on an NHL ice with NHL players or you're coaching, you know, a might or novice team. There's the disparity of talent and interest and skill and background knowledge and all athletic ability. The disparity of that is massive. And and so 
trying to be able to have something for everyone is incredibly difficult and be able to factor everyone into the development pack is is incredibly difficult and that's why single structure most play coaches we they live in there because it's so daunting just to think about okay well how do i get every individual kid's needs um, met and be able to see if I can advance them regardless of where they're at. Can I, how can I meet each player where they're currently at? It's very, very, very challenging. And so I'm going to give you some ideas inside this single structure. And then as the podcast moves through the episodes, we'll get into a lot more of the, of the advanced ideas of how you can really pull all the kids in. But initially we want to kind of meet you and meet most coaches where they're at, which is, Daryl, honestly, I just want to get this drill to work and not only work, but make it go so that it, it looks reasonable and that the kids, uh, you know, get a get a good sweat in and then they have a, a chance to kind of get something out of it. And then when that drill is done, uh, then I got to see if I can get the second one to go. And then, of course, like we've all been there where you know, you, you run, you have an hour practice, you take 10 minutes for each, you know, budget 10 minutes for every, for every one of your drills. So now you're basically at 50 minutes. And if you're lucky, you have 60 minutes, uh, depending on where, like how your rink is run. So you have, you have, that's five or six drills that you're trying to run. And I remember being in practices where I would run as a, a, a practice and I'd be like, I think maybe two out of the five drills were actually good. The other three were like, uh, it was just, it took everything out of me just to get it going. Like it just took so long to just get it going. Like the real struggle was to get it to work, get the timing down, get the passes on, you know, all, all that. And then I'm just frustrated. The kids get frustrated. I'm trying to draw it up and then trying to demonstrate it. And it just, it, it, it doesn't look like it's going to work. So then at first I just blame the kids, but like the kids don't care. Like they're not interested. They're not want to work hard. And it was the kid's fault. And then I started to realize, no, it's not really the kid's fault. It's my fault. I have to, I have to own this. And I, if I want to become good at this, I gotta, I have to assume everything is my fault. And once I did that, that was very helpful because then I just took it on. Like if it's not working, it's because I didn't communicate it well enough. I didn't, uh, demonstrate it properly. I didn't set it up properly. Uh, I didn't evaluate the drill for what its true value was. It didn't fit properly in the sequence. Like all of it was wrong. Everything's on me. I got to go back to the lab and figure it out. So that was, that was very helpful. What also comes along with that, that, that I took on was that the drill was, I tried to make the drill less relevant and make myself more relevant in what it was that I was doing. So that the the teacher in me was always really important. And I find when I listen to a lot of people talk about uh, player development and, and drill, de drill development and such, and especially now with the advent of just, well, just play games, what happens is, is that you're, we're trying to find ways to take the coach out and the teacher out and make the drill kind of do it like the game teaches so just drop the puck and stand back and let it go and they'll figure it out or they won't and that's just not good enough for me like I always want to make sure that every kid has an opportunity to be able to pick something up and I just know too much about it to know that that's just not the case so now I'm trying to figure out okay so if that's the case and I can become more important. How do I become more important? Well, it's in details. Okay, well, everyone's detailed until you run into somebody who's actually detailed. Then you realize you're not really all that detailed. And that realization happened to me many, many, many times. I thought, okay, well, I wasn't very detailed. But now I am very detailed. And relative to my group of people that I see here... I'm really much more detailed than they are. So that gave me a chance to say, okay, well, I think I'm, I'm doing better. And then I, not long after I thought I had it all figured out, I ran into somebody who had another level of detail or like, oh, geez, yeah, I'm not really all that, all that detailed. And then the interesting part was 
I found when I started to become more detailed, my message got all convoluted because I really didn't understand what I was actually saying to the degree where I could communicate it simply. So then that became a problem. The more detailed I tried to be, the more convoluted the message was. And I wasn't really communicating as clearly as I wanted to. And that was because I didn't know enough. And the, the people that communicate the most simply are not the people that understand things simply. They understand things in a highly complex way, which is why they're able to communicate it simply. I didn't know that. The more that I started to understand that, then I started to dig into it more, started to educate myself more about what it was that I was actually trying to teach. And then, and, and educating yourself is very difficult because it's not like there's books out there on this or you can't, you got to kind of, it's a lot of it is the experience and reflection, trying to figure out what it is that I'm actually doing. So when I first took responsibility that everything out here is on me, it's either if it's working then it's, it's working because the players did a great job. And if it's not working, it's because the coach is no good. That's kind of the approach that I took. And the more that I did that, the more responsibility I took on it, then the more I started to try to really understand what it was that I was trying to do. And I, I, that helped me. And then I started to become a better communicator because I was able to explain things more simply because I understood it better. So that's... A long way of saying the teacher really matters in this. We don't want to lose the teacher. And if anything, especially in today's day, we need more teachers, more people who are dedicated to wanting to teach and understand progression because that's what's going to help us continue to take the game in, in, a, in, a, in a more positive way and, and, and evolve the players that we have. That's what's going to do. It's going to come down to more teachers. So, all that being said, the, the drill has to be a means to, a pro, to, a, to the process, not to an end necessarily, but to a process. So, this is where one of my big evolutions as a coach and, and teacher was that I was able to understand that and take the approach of I want to run drills in three to five drill runs. So I'm going to take a topic and instead of having it where back in the day I would have, okay, we're going to have one warm, we got 50 minutes. So divide the ice up into five, that's five drills. So I'm going to do a warm up, some kind of a skating warm up. I'm going to do some kind of a shooting drill. Then I'm going to do something that allows me to get some pace in this whole thing. And then I'm going to do something that I want to teach. So it could be like the four check or the, you know, back check or whatever, something check. I knew that um, at, le at least initially until I started to understand offense. And then, the net, and then at the end, I wanted to have something where I was either going to revisit one of the areas that I felt like wasn't as good or I'm going to do something like that had a little bit more pace and could be like a continuous three on two or you know or as it got going maybe run a game of some sort all of that so that was kind of the core base structure that I was that I was working off then once I started to learn to teach I was like well that's really not good because now what I'm doing in one drill has no relationship to what I'm doing to the next drill which has no relationship to what I'm doing to the third drill so I've run five drills and none of them really have anything to do with the next so the issue with that is I don't have a lot of, I don't have enough reps because when you go back and you watch the 10 minutes of that particular drill, then I realized my work rest ratio was one to four. I had 16 kids on the ice, uh, 20, so I say, yeah, say 16 kids on the ice. Okay, so now I have a one to four ratio. The drill I'm doing is for 10 minutes. The duration of the drill is a certain amount of time. When I really look at it, how many reps did they really get? Each individual kid, how many reps did they individually get? And if I didn't execute the drill properly, then how many times did they actually do it right? So kid went six times. He went did it right three times. 
how many times, so how many reps do you really get? Well, you got three. So that's, and then I go, and then that's done. I'm not even focused on that anymore. Now I'm going to move to the next spot. And then when I move to the next, the next drill, the same thing happens. So now I've run five drills and I got a grand total of like 12 to 15 reps that were actually good. The rest of them you can kind of throw out. That's not really an effective practice. And I was doing that on a regular and that just wasn't good enough for me. I had to figure out how to do it. So that's when I came up with the idea behind practice theming. Practice theming is the idea of I'm going to take these drills, but each one of these drills is related to it. So my objective in the last drill is to run my four check drill. But before that, in order to run a good four check drill, I need to have the most important skill for me was say angling that day. So the angling piece is the most important thing. So that means all five drills are going to have angling in it in some way, shape or form. And that way they're going to get more reps. So now at the end of the practice, even if I'm still only getting three good reps out of each kid, at least now instead of only three angling drill reps from the one angling drill that we did and then we never did angling again the rest of the practice, he only had really three reps. Now, at least if I did it poorly, they were doing it 15 times. So now I'm at least five times better than what I was before and the player has a chance to be five times better in terms of their uh, skill acquisition and angling in the forecheck because I approached it from a practice theming perspective. So, and this is still single structure. Like all I'm doing is trying to figure out how to run these drills well. And, but I've, now I've taken responsibility for what I'm doing. Uh, and if it's wrong, it's because of me. And then I'm also trying to make sure that uh, I have a, enough reps and make sure that the reps are in there. And then I'm accounting for the idea that there's probably going to be, I'm not going to set up this drill properly. So there's, uh, and there's going to be missed reps that aren't very good. And so I'm going to count factor that into it. And so now I'm just trying to make sure that we get as many good reps as we can along the way. And that's that that perspective change really helped me become much more effective because then as I became more effective at running drills and that's that's the thing like running drill is also again the detail. So this is how I became more detailed without becoming more detailed I was because I had a theme I could focus all my energy on the execution of the theme that the main theme was angling so now where's my details in the angling well now it's speed control skating it's stick position it's actual angle like staying on top or above the check and leading, uh, having a leading stick, and then it's all the contact and puck separation skills that go into that. Well, because I'm doing this for 50 minutes and I'm focused on this stuff, I can gradually just keep picking up these details as I'm going rather than if I have only one 10 minute drill that it has to accomplish all this stuff. They're only going to get three reps. It's just not possible for me to get really detailed. By the time the moment is in, it's gone and we're on to the, we're on to the next. And there's certainly no opportunity for reflection. But if I'm doing a practice theme and I got this, even though the, even though I'm still as a coach, I'm still locked into just making sure the drill runs well. That's a single structure problem. At least now I'm carrying some developmental value with me. And that was really where things started to change. And then as I got better, I could become more detailed. I could add more layers into what it was that I was doing. But that, that really was a breakthrough for me, was practice theming, even though I was still locked in as a single structure uh, in, in a single structure practice. And a single structure practice is also includes games. Small area games is a single structure. You're just focused on the rules of the game. You're focused on the ro rotating kids in and out. But the actual execution of what it is that you're trying to do with the game, it leaves a lot. There's still a lot. There's not a lot of details in there. Um, initially, it takes a long time to learn how to run a game and pull, extra, really extrapolate 
enough reps and then all the good reps to be able to actually impact the player in a positive way in that area. And it doesn't matter how many constraints you put on it. That's all window dressing. It's great. And it makes us all feel like we're actually doing something in terms of evolving past single structure. You're really not. You're really not. And when we, we have to acknowledge that. And you as the teacher have a greater responsibility in, in first knowing how to run the drill in the game. doesn't matter. Drill, game, whatever it is. But how you are able to create detail inside of that. And detail comes into how, many, how well were you able to set up the game so that the game has an ability to provide multiple reps in the target area that the game is designed to elicit. Once that's been established, then how many reps is each kid actually getting? And then how many reps are good reps? And then how much reflection do we really have? We don't have, we don't have a lot. And so that's where the best kids get more reps. They get more good reps. And they have more opportunity at reflection where they can try to do different things. So the top kids continue to separate if they can have those things where they can do those most often. They're going to have the most opportunity to get better. To the degree that you're not at the top is the degree that you have lower number of reps, lower number of good reps, no reflection, just trying to survive the game. And so this is where in the single structure even though that's where most of us are living is inside this single structure, we still have a responsibility to try to find a way to impact more kids. And that's where the theme comes in. That's why for the longest time, I was saying, look, I don't care that you're running a game. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that you're only running games and one game doesn't have any reflection or any, in, uh, any relationship to the next game. So again, you're still in the same situation where where if you were just running drills, because we've all been attacking drills, like drills are no good, they're terrible, and like we, we shouldn't run it. Because it, a lot of times when you have an inexperienced coach, he can't get the drill to run in a way in which you can get enough reps. So now you have a lot of kids standing in line, the drill duration is too long, you got a lot of kids that are bored, and now it's, 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 so now it's a mess. So that now you're like, okay, look, if we just run a game, instead of having one kid moving at a time, we could have a three on three. So now I have six kids. And then we can also control the shift length. So we can just buzz them in, buzz them out. So now I can have those guys rolling in at, you know, one every four or five reps to get guy, to get guys. So now at least I got them in and I got them moving. Great, but we're still not really teaching them anything. We just got them in and got them moving. And there's a few kids that are controlling the play. The rest of the kids are left to their own devices. They're not really getting better. There's no better off than when you were running one and he was standing there shooting pucks against the boards. Really not. So that's where I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of connect a few of the dots of like how can we become more effective in our ability in the single structure, regardless of whether you're doing. A, 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 a single structure drill or a game. The trick is, or at least one of the tricks, is to run it in a themed process. So we're going to run two drills that are have, that we know have high number of reps that give us a chance to get in there and try to teach them something and impart a something. And then uh, the game that we're going to do next, so we're going to do one drill, then we're going to do another drill that's related that gives them more opportunity, but maybe a little bit diff structured, slightly different. And then we're going to run a game. When we do the game, it will carry this theme with it. So now they've had multiple interactions with the skill. And that's what we know about skill acquisition. Skill acquisition is the ability to get multiple interactions with the skill and in different situations so that the recall is quicker and the, uh, the variations from that particular skill become cleaner because you have multiple chances to be able to use it. So it's, 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 it's the culmination of multiple instances that are going to recur in a game that allow the player to then be able to execute. And that's, 
and and execute it even slightly different because the best players like when they're execute the best execution of skill not necessarily the best players but the best execution of skill is when the player is able to recognize a situation they can pull the right skill for that for that situation and they can execute it based on the space available the time available the options that are available and they can find a, a using that using that skill that becomes part of the solution and then they might get three or four of those instances in a game and they recognize that skill but then in the inside the skill they make quick decisions of how they might exit the skill or how they might do things and so when you when you really see its execution in those four times it has very uh, consistent core core principles that are being utilized in terms of the skill execution but at the end because of the situations a slightly different they execute the end of it a little bit different and that's real skill execution so we need multiple instances and the real criticism behind single structure when you run a drill is that you're doing the same thing over and over again you're not allowing for environmental change which can impact the player's ability to transfer because it's not going to be perfect every time you're not going to get a puck in that same spot while you're in motion you might have to adjust your speed because of the circumstances surrounding the puck carrier you might have to slow down first because you got to understand the timing then now you got to speed up maybe and then you now you catch the puck so the first time you go you got to speed up the second time you go you got to slow down but you're still catching this pass so that's that's really what we're what we're trying to get to and that's what i find is most fascinating about how we're trying to figure out how to become more effective in these in these practices and particularly how to become more effective in a single structure which is which is extremely difficult um one of the things that i wanted to kind of get to also is what are the benefits of a of a drill that has a repetitive nature to it so this is like a big criticism of drills is that when you run a drill it's the player is doing the same thing over and over again and it doesn't have any game context uh in the sense of it has game context in that you know you're catching the puck you know maybe as you're crossing the offensive blue line yes but then you're doing it without pressure or without a variance of of contextual situations so those all those reads fall off and because all those reads fall off for some reason that that's all of a sudden made it no good it's not that it's no good there's a real value in being able to have someone uh, do something repetitively to be able to acquire the skill in a certain way that's really important so when you're doing the when you're when you're doing skill development you need repetition because and and this these structures can give you repetition where it falls short is one the repetitions might be too far in between in other words the work rest ratio might not be good enough so you got too many kids standing in line and now we're running this drill and now he's forgot even he's forgot his own name in the time in which he's been waiting for his own turn uh to, for the for his next turn that's a big problem so that's one if we can get the drill to run at a reasonable frequency where the player can get get uh, enough repetitions in in a reasonable amount of time that also offers opportunity for reflection and we can keep the player focused on the actual takeaway of the skill we have a chance to really make that have great value and it can be one of those lead up drills to what you really want to do which is get into the game contextual stuff and that's really where we want to live we want to be able to have some type of a drill structure that gives us multiple interactions with this with this skill where the player can get a real feel for the the things that are going to be important to execute 
so that then when they get to the game and that instance occurs, one, they can recognize it, two, they've now acquired the feel of the skill to be able to take it to a level that allows them to then have a fair chance of being able to transfer it. And that's what we want to, that's what we, where we want to try to get to. And that's why I think when we criticize drills that have this repetitive nature, like that it's an actual drill, we got to be careful because there is a lot of value in that. If you're running a game, the odds of every kid getting multiple interactions with this intended skill is really low. You're going to get the best players are going to have quite a few and the bottom player is going to have maybe none and sometimes the best players have none too because they just hijack the drill and just don't do what's they just focus on scoring um, because they can and what you're actually trying to accomplish they're not doing that anyways so they they oh they will um they will make they they will not do the constraint they won't include the constraint in the game. They'll just do whatever they're going to do to go and to go and score. And so sometimes, depending on the way in which you structured your game, you still don't have any any real value coming out of that either because the players hijack the drill and this and the game. And so now you're getting no skill development out of that either. So these are all things that I think this is why the coach has to still be most important. The coach is critical and the coach having a plan for what they want to do, understanding practice theming is extremely helpful, being able to understand that every when you run in drills or games, you got to know how many opportunities are the players actually getting and that the number of in, different interactions with the skill is what is going to be the what, what the player is going to have the best opportunity to take away. So what is it exactly that we're doing there? And then understand how to become more fluent in running the drills and picking drills that fit what it is that you're trying to do early on. So the first drill has to be something that gives them a lot of reps so that they get a great feel for what you're doing, gives you a chance to evaluate, gives them the chance to evaluate what's going on. They start to make adjustments. You help them by you and your coaching staff are making suggestions to them. They start to incorporate some of those suggestions. Then you move to the next drill, maybe less reps, but now much more focused because they're making more of these uh, adjustments as they go. Maybe there's a, um, a little bit more as it relates to decision making. Maybe they got to focus on their timing a little bit more, etc. And then now they get to the game. Well, now they've had a fair opportunity to have multiple interactions. They're going to have a chance to, to execute in the game. You set up the constraints properly. Now you're really going to have a fair opportunity. And then you then give them an uh, give them some good feedback. Uh, and now the player has a great chance to be able to take the collective of the number of reps and be able to extrapolate that out. And now that's a skill that's usable. That's really what it's that's really what it's all about and that they feel confident in it and comfortable in it. Um, the other uh, thing that I think is really interesting and this is where one of the things I started to do and we'll talk about this later on in the, in the next couple of ep episodes excuse me is personal variation decisions are really important and a lot of that comes down to personal skill set, um, the way the player is wired, the type of player that they are, um, where they are in their development, uh, the player could be making some uh, some certain decisions about how they want to execute the end of the skill. They might have a certain, you know, a certain skill. So, for example, uh, a month ago they might have learned a ten and two, and now they're looking to. They love this ten and two. They're starting to try to incorporate it into all kinds of different things, and all of a sudden, like the inside of these catches. They doing a cat ten and two inside the catch, and that's just a personal uh, execution decision based on kind of where they're at in their development, and that can be incorporated inside of your skill, your theme. They could be using that as a, as a stackable uh, skill set that they want to continue to bring, and that when they start to learn how to do that, they can start taking what they learned yesterday and bring that to what they're doing today and then they start combining these things together and then you're truly getting into a stack 
that's also a major part of player development is the stacking of not only skills but days and themes together as part of the plan of where you're really trying to stack these things on top of each other and now you're able to get create so many more variants of opportunity and then so now the player recognizes a situation they have multiple ways in which they can solve the problem that makes them much more effective and that's really what we're trying to get to is give them many options skills are options and the more skills they have the more options they have and then the more combinations they could use uh, multiple skills in a variance of different combinations to be able to solve this skill or solve the situation that at hand and and then they're going to be able to make choices and decisions and then you can be a part of some of those decision making processes by asking them questions about hey why did you choose that skill I was really interesting and they go well, yeah well we learned that yesterday and I was thinking about it and then you know, that situation arose, and so I was able to take what we learned today, combine it with uh, what we did yesterday, and now it just made a really cool made a really cool play. Now they're really getting connected to uh, skill development and player development inside of the practice. That gives them a chance to start thinking about how they might want to impose different skills in different reps. So the player knows, you know, they're going to go through it, go through the drill for however many minutes they're going to get six or eight opportunities they're going to do the way you've intended it two or three times to kind of get the feel and then they're going to start playing around with different different uh, types of uh, different types of combinations that's real higher level skill development and that's what we want to try to get to which is what we'll talk about in the next uh, in the next episode but when we're talking about single structure we have to kind of get it to a point where the single structure aspects are ha have great value and as we are trying to evolve as a coach and become more effective in our own personal coaching we can carry these kids with us as we go and that's which that's what's important they can start also picking up more skills as we become better in the single structure we're able to pull other aspects with them with with them they can start stacking things on top of each other. We can learn more about uh, how we want to be able to run the practices more effectively. We can maybe start inching our way out of single structure and get into some of the other things. So we'll get into that in the next episode. But this was a good opportunity to kind of go through what single structure is, where we're at with it, and how we can start maybe some ideas of how we can become more effective in there to give us a chance to evolve and, and get out of it.